We are continuing the trip north down the river to the San Sioux Rapids and then to Fort Good Hope. Leaving Norman Wells and that's a fishnet there and you have to be careful not to uh, get tangled up in it. These islands were built to get at the oil, which is actually under the river. They were built in the 60s, and I highly doubt they would allow that now. We're fueling up here. A very awkward system and a little bit dangerous. Heavy uh, drum there. Keith is an expert at uh, siphoning the gas and we're using more gas because we're using my little two-stroke as opposed to his four-stroke. This is amazing given how steep it was. Make it? Yeah. yeah. He's up. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. The first time I was on the Mackenzie River was when I was working for the Canadian Wildlife Service. I was surveying for nesting raptors along the proposed route of the Mackenzie Valley Pipeline and it was the first time that a helicopter had been used to survey and we started with these cliffs looking for nesting peregrines. There's a site there I remember. Beautiful site here. Keith said he stops by. We checked with the guest book. He had, in fact, been here five years before. We signed it again, had a nice cup of tea, and went on our way. The calm before the storm, but you can see it coming in. They did come in quickly, and they weren't very nice when they did. You can see the water has changed here. Betty's getting dressed up and I'm teasing her a bit. We saw several bears trying to swim the river. We got quite close to this one. This is a typical camp on a sandbar to avoid the bugs. Breakfast the next morning. <laughs> oh, he's taking pictures of me. Picture of my butt.
Yeah, you're good. No, it's perfect. No, it's not. This is the first uh, real climb that we had. And I want to know if my rope goes to the bottom. So that's what we were talking about there. And so far it only goes to the ledge. So I'm not sure if I can make it to the bottom or not. She's filming Monkey Man. This is quite a nice site. I've processed the young and now I'm just gathering prey remains which are scattered about the ledge there. I don't see the end of his rope, do you? It's coiled there. You can see where the end of my rope is there. I just kicked it. And now I get to see whether it'll make it to the bottom or not, which is important. I use a special chain coil so it doesn't tangle. Keith climbing down over the driftwood. Standard equipment, camera to the left, the rope, measuring equipment, and the prey remains. While I was banding, this is what Wayne did, and God love him for it. This was the next site. It was clearly occupied as the birds were defending, but the weather was not great, and it was late in the day, and there's no way to get up over top to get to it, so we just marked it as occupied and kept right on going. This log caused the biggest scare of the trip. I hopped out to tie the boat up and the log rolled over me. I'm trying to show how big it is. It's more than a foot in diameter. You can see how long. It rolled actually up over my ankle and it was right in there. There's no way we could have moved it, but Keith got, Keith got this piece of wood and we pried it over. And luckily I, and amazingly, I was fine, although a little sore. Nature's tap, so we were getting fresh water. You wouldn't do this down south. I did most of the climbing because Keith had a bad arm from a fall. However, because of my leg, he did this one. The actual rapids at Sansu, they're not too bad. This area has actually been uh, cleared of rocks and things by the Coast Guard, so it's more navigable. Go, 
as you can see from the white caps, that's why they say keep left. There were three sites at the Sansu Rapids. This one was on the west bank and the other two were on the east bank. This is the next site. Note the orange uh, lichens there, actually. That grows on their guano or the excrement, and it makes it easier to find sites. And, of course, there are the young. As you can see here, this isn't as bad as it looks. There's a ledge here that you can actually walk along, which is what I did. This is a little tricky. It is uh, quite high up, as you can see where the water is. And uh, this is one that bugged Wayne. He said he hated seeing me do this, but there's the young. When we were at Keith's, we put a cover on the front and we kept all the things that we wanted to keep dry, sleeping bags, things like that in there. And what I used to do was pack and unpack it. Betty, who is a sculptor, said that I would be a good sculptor because I was very good spatially in the way I could pack things very efficiently. However, she does beautiful work and there's no way I could compete with her. Great. Oh. This is the third site. Note the yellow feathers there. They're from yellow shafted flickers. Keith said when he first started surveying the river that the sites would be just covered with them. We stayed an extra day so that Keith could take some pictures of that last site. So I went up checking some cliffs that were back from the river a bit. There's the view of the river. See how that orange lichen stands out? This is an eagle nest. Yeah, I would like another piece, please. Well, has the plan Perfect. been made? No. Nope. We'd be happy to see you. Well, I was up by four. 